I think last few seconds are always automated, completely automated, where all events are done by the computers, various computers, right from lift off, launching of the boosters, firing of the boosters, firing of the step ons, first stage, monitoring all the events which are going on. I'm sure all the Mm, and the scientists who are sitting on various launch decks, they must be counting on their fingertips each and every event. Because I have gone through this kind of an experience many times. It is one of those events which you live, you live for all the time. It is a launch in, your, in, the, in the life of a scientist. is some event which one would like to always be through. Because that gives you the biggest kick and gives achievement you get. I am sure the tension must be there. Mm. But the robustness and the, and, the, and the kind of technology which uh, our Department of Space has done, we are proud of it because we know that its reliability, we know its functionality is going to be fantastic and we are going to get a nice launch. I'm quite certain about it. All right, uh, we're all hoping so uh, for that, Dr. Saraswat, but also, you know, the tension, the nervousness, uh, uh, tell us, it doesn't really end at the liftoff because there are uh, a lot that needs to be monitored right from the stage when the liftoff happens of the rocket and when uh, the, sat uh, the rocket carries the satellite up. Uh, for how long does one need to monitor to say to safely say that it's been a successful launch? See, in any, any satellite launch vehicle, there are because it's a three-stage vehicle, so there are yeah, every stage to start, and then all the maneuvers which does it during the first stage, second stage, third stage. Each each stage has got number of events which are very critical, and each event has to be seen through. Then only we can say that the satellite launch is successful or going to be successful. If the first stage events go all right and the end of the first stage, the velocity what we need to achieve has been achieved, that means we are okay. Then then the, sex, the second stage starts burning, then we are okay that the thrust has built up and now the maneuvers which are going to be done during the second stage, including the control maneuvers, if they are all going smoothly, we are comfortable. Till the burnout of the second stage and the velocity which is needed to be achieved, attitude which is required to be achieved at the end of the second stage. If and that how much time done, is that, sir? Successful. How much time is that if you're talking about in terms of... I think it varies. I think... The, I, I think. All right, sir, please hang on. I think we have liftoff visuals. Uh, there you have it, the GSLV F09 shooting up into the air at exactly 4.57 p.m. And uh, it seems like a smooth ride for the South Asia satellite sitting pretty in the GSAT F09, the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle, a launch that came to India at a cost of 450 crore rupees. This is the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's gift to South Asia, as he calls it. And uh, we are expecting better communication, better connectivity of all of the SARC countries, except barring uh, Pakistan, of course, which chose to stay out of the satellite uh, program. But uh, this rocket seems to have gone up beautifully, and we are uh, waiting for other visuals to come inside uh, of the control center to suggest that all is well. But usually we, we, we've seen earlier launches as well, and this seems to be headed towards the orbit. Remember, as we are talking to Dr. Saraswat, this is a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle. It's a geostationary satellite. It's going to be in the orbit and appear to be stationary while in orbit. A three-stage launch. So it'll have to be a while. We see that uh, launch vehicle disappearing now. It's gone too far and uh, a historic uh, launch for India. The world, remember, is watching how India has managed to launch this uh, satellite into the orbit, helping all of the SARC nations at one go, making sure that India fulfills its promise that it made to the SARC countries about two years ago. In fact, uh, this is a two-year-old promise of the Indian Prime Minister. It fructified moments ago. You see that GSLV F09 satellite launch vehicle up in the air. It's a three-stage launch, remember. And uh, GSLV's 11th flight into space. 
GSLB will place the South Asian communication satellite into orbit. We've seen the liftoff just at exact 4.57 p.m. This satellite will cater to the communications need of all South countries except Pakistan, which pulled out at, uh, eventually from this project. Remember, the Prime Minister mooted this idea after two in 2014 after he took oath. At that time, Pakistan had welcomed that move. Now, these are live visuals coming to you from the Sri Dhawan, Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. Prime Minister Modi, in his uh, radio address, has said that this satellite was India's gift to the region and will go a long way in addressing the economic and development priorities of the nations in this region. Remember, six of India's neighbor, that includes Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Maldives are participating in the space-based regional communication project. The satellite weighs uh, 2,230 kilograms during liftoff and is carrying 12 KU band transponders developed at the cost of 235 crores and the total cost at of 450 crores. Now let's just go back a few moments and look at that beautiful launch, that historic launch of the South Asian satellite, a first of its kind where India showcases its uh, prowess, another feather in the Indian Space Research Organization's cap. It's a huge effort, an effort that has been praised by China as well. China expressing its willingness to be part of this uh, satellite program. But this, remember, India, India's idea for bringing the SARC nations closer in terms of communication, establishing a hotline so that these nations can cooperate very closely in times of emergency and natural disasters.